It's the Mountain West Tournament Championship in Las Vegas. Oh, a steal by Butler. And the flush. The Aztecs are back in the Mountain West Championship. It's the fifth straight year they're in the final. Key jab, a three, is good. How about Key jab? He caught the hill, put it up, and hits. For the first time, Boise State is going to the Mountain West Championship game. From Las Vegas, CBS Sports presents the Mountain West Conference Championship. It's the three seed San Diego State Aztecs and the number one seed Boise State Broncos. San Diego State beat Fresno State and top 25 Colorado State to get here. Boise State took care of Nevada and Wyoming, which brings us to this afternoon just off the strip. Good afternoon, everyone, with Dan Bonner and Evan Washburn on our sideline. Kevin Harlan, thank you so much for joining us. This championship game, Dan, is familiar territory for San Diego State. Well, Kevin, they've been here five times in a row, but interestingly, Boise State's first appearance in this championship game. It'll make it interesting today. You've watched a lot of these two teams. What does the tape tell you? Well, one of the best players of this tournament has been Boise State's Abu Kijab, and it's just not his numbers, and they're impressive. But Kevin, his energy, his enthusiasm, the force of his personality has helped the Broncos be at their best. And I'll tell you something, they're going to have to be at their best today because this San Diego State team is a defensive juggernaut. It's really hard to get by them. And then once you do, if you're able to get by them, there's the defensive player of the year in the conference, Nathan Mensa, back there to swat it away. And you better protect the ball because they are ball hawks. All right, now this all takes us to the AT&T 5G fast analysis. San Diego State relies on their defense, but their offense, they rely heavily on screens and rolls, and you better guard them effectively because they can sneak guys at the basket. Nathan Minson, yeah, the defensive player of the year, but he is pretty good on the inside. Trey Pulliam finds him, the defense doesn't, and that's an easy basket. Now, Boise State, they do a lot of screening and moving, and this time we talk about Kijab. Look at all the attention he draws, and that means his big guy, Armus, is wide open inside. This big guy can catch it and score. This is going to be fun. The Mountain West thinks he'll get as many as four teams in the NCAA tournament. Part of the field of 68, with selection Sunday less than 24 hours away on the road to the Final Four. CBS Sports coverage of the Mountain West Championship is sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. Geico, you could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. And by Nissan, electric cars for electric drivers. Thomas and Mack center of the campus of UNLV and the scene of the championship game of the Mountain West Championship. There's a look at 12-year head coach Leon Rice. He was voted by his peers in the media, the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. Abu Kijab is their leading scorer and a guy you got to watch for all game long. Defensively for the Aztec, Nathan Mensa, one of the top 10 defensive players in the country. And what a job fifth year head coach Brian Dutcher has done in the four previous years. He's been voted the conference coach of the year twice. He's got four conference titles. Brian Dutcher, one of the best in the country. And for more on San Diego State, let's say good afternoon to Evan Washburn. Good afternoon, Kevin. So you just showed the starting five for San Diego State. Well, those will be the first five guys on the floor. Make no mistake, it's been the bench for the Aztecs. It's been the driving force in getting them back into championship Saturday. 49 combined points from that bench in the quarters and semis. And we spoke to Brian Dutcher about it, and he said that's how they 
built this year's team. He feels like they can go eight to nine deep, and that's valuable because of the way they play defense, relentless for 40 minutes, and it's also key being able to win a conference tournament, guys. Three games in three days, and this team played just a little over 12 hours ago, but they feel like they have fresh legs because of that depth. Evan, thank you. Yep, it's going to be a factor as you take a look at Brian Dutcher. Yeah, Jim Dutcher, longtime college coach. He was the longtime assistant for Hall of Famer Steve Fisher. They were together at Michigan. They were together for all these years with the Aztecs. 23 years he's been with the program. His fifth year as the head coach. And his numbers are terrific. But Dan, as a conference, the Mountain West metrics measure them just a fraction behind the ACC and the Pac-12. Yet ahead of the AEC, the Atlantic 10, and the West Coast Conference. So this is one of the best conferences in the country. It's been an outstanding conference, Kevin, and it's a conference where they play one close game after the other. And all year long, it really hasn't mattered whether it's the top team playing the bottom team. These, all these games have been exceedingly competitive, and we expect nothing different today. Well, in coming in, they thought it might be the most anticipated conference tournament in the 23 years of the Mountain West, and the games have been tight. They have been close, and it is made for a lot of thrills and spills. Our officials this afternoon and a terrific crew, David Hall, 32 NCAA tournaments. He's officiated a couple of Final Fours and an NCAA championship game. Eric Curry, 15 NCAA tournaments. And Chris Rastatter, two Final Fours. Larry Spaulding is our standby official, and away we go. Boise State in San Diego State with the ball right now. And Boise State opens in a man-to-man, -man, and they are a very, very good man-to-man -man team. Bradley, who's the Cal transfer, on top for Lamont Butler. He played for the Cal Golden Bears, this player did right here, and they go inside the acrobatic Kashad Johnson. Ball knocked away. It's a whistle, and it's a foul, and it's inside, and it goes on Boise State. Armush will pick up the first. Bradley draws so much attention that you got to focus on him, and Armush just, you know, that, there wasn't a lot of contact there. He tried to keep both of his hands up, but he got his body into Johnson. Armush is a guy who's very valuable on the inside for them, Kevin. They would prefer not to have him in foul trouble. Well, we know he's big. <laughs> he is yes, a, we do. <laughs> <laughs> he covers a lot of space. Kashad Johnson at the line. He's a junior out of Oakland. And there's the aforementioned Armush. He just picked up the foul and just picked up the rebound. And here comes Boise State, 15-3 and three in the regular season. The number one seed. Armish on top. Mentz is on him. Now here's the freshman from Spokane who is recruited by a lot of Power Five conferences and that is Dagenhart. And you see the missed shot with the subsequent rebound. And San Diego State will get it. San Diego State plays basically, they play you heads up uh, on their man-to-man -man defense. It's hard to get by him, but Dagenhart is, looks to me like he's gonna have that opportunity a lot tonight. He's gonna be, really need to be able to convert. Trey Pulliam on top. In dark with red trim, San Diego State, a floater on the fly, and he can't get it. And push back up and through. Nathan Mencha waiting well and cobbled it up. And they just, Boise State simply couldn't control the ball. Kevin, they are not a good, they are a great defensive rebounding team. They get 80% of their opponents' misses, but not that time. Boise State in white. They won seven of eight. Beat Wyoming last night in the semifinals. Armish and Mensa. That's going to be a terrific matchup. Acott trying to chisel his way inside, and he works on Butler. Count it. That's a foul. Put the ball down, ties it at two, with a foul called inside. Less than two minutes in. A pulley, I mean, he does a great job with these floaters, and the ball just bounces off Acott's hand right to Mensa. And speaking of Acott, at six feet eight, he's got about a four-inch height advantage on Butler, and that's twice in a row now. We have seen Boise State run that exact play, first with Dagan Hart, this time with Acott. Emmanuel Acott, a senior from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. 
Butler picked up the first foul for the Aztecs, and they come the other way with Matt Bradley from San Bernardino, California. Said he's going to return for next year. He's a senior. He'll come back for one more. Pulliam making a move on Acott. Looking across the middle for the cutting Johnson and out of bounds. Kevin, these two teams are very evenly matched. Boise State won both games during the regular season, but they were very tight, one possession kind of matchups. And things like maybe offensive rebounding and forcing turnovers are going to decide a game like this. You have to be better with the basketball. The team in white, Boise State, won the two key games in the regular season by a total of six points over San Diego State. Taken hard with a three. The freshman puts it in. He was the Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Year. Well, he's a guy who is mature beyond his years. They love his decision-making ability. And even though he did not score in yesterday's game, they were confident that he could have a pretty good game today. Matt Bradley is dancing on the defense of Key Jam. Key Jam will pick up number one. And for now we see a double team. And whenever you have the double team, if you can move the ball quickly, you can find an open player. And Dagenhart is a very good three-point shooter, particularly when he has that much time. San Diego State 23 and 7 with the screen and the three, putting it down. Lamont Butler. He's only a 30% three-point shooter, but he's got a high motor and that time highly accurate from distance. Well, he's noted for his defensive ability, and lots of times in a championship game like this, it's the guys you don't expect it who sometimes can get you the big baskets. Key jab, Acott, back to key jab. St. Catharines, Ontario, with a spinning move inside. Taken Hart will go up, try to concoct something, and picked up by Bradley. When Mensa created a very mm. tough shot there. That's what happens. You beat somebody on the perimeter and you have Nathan Mensa back there waiting for you. Shot Johnson can't get the three. Boys who stay at the other way. 26 and 7 was their record. 26 wins, a program record for them. They've never won that many before. Acott with a three. That was over Butler. He is a, another very good standstill three point shooter. He shoots over 40% for the year, Kevin, and you, you've got to put more pressure on Boise State than that. They've got a number of guys who can shoot threes. Bradley over the much taller defense. Armish was there defending, grabbed the rebound, racing the other way. He's Shaver. He's a senior from Phoenix. He'll work his way inside, try the reverse. And so there with the rebound. One of the best rebounders in the conference leads this team. And on the move again, Pulliam puts up that gentle floater for two. And that's his shot, Kevin. Yep. <laughs> that's his shot. He, he can drive the ball to the basket, but he's not really a jump shooter. But you let him get going to the basket, and that little floater, he almost never misses. Jab will look into the defense. Bradley and Dagenhart with another three and another hit from outside. He was not starting to begin the season. Seven games in, they did start him. Since he became a starter, they've gone 23 and three. Made a huge difference. Turned their season around because the Broncos began three and four. Forcing the issue inside Bradley, and she gobbles up the rebound and puts it back up and in and fouled on the play. Nathan Mensah gets the two underneath, and a timeout taken. Back and forth we go. Two-point Bronco lead. The Mountain West Championship game on CBS. Hey, everyone. Greg Gumbel in New York. The MAC Tournament Championship is now a final second seed. St. Peter's defeats fourth seed Monmouth 60-54 to to become the 15th team into this year's NCAA Tournament. Back to Atlantic City. Kevin and Dan. Or Las Vegas, they're one and the same. As far Greg as we're concerned, we can gamble both places, and that's right up our alley, but there's St. Peter's getting in. I wish we were. No, I'm glad we're here. I, I will be honest. I think the weather probably is better here in Las Vegas, but St. Peter's is in. Here's a look at Brian Dutcher, who's got his team, and Leon Rice has his Bronco team. 
poised for a berth. This winner today in the championship game definitely will help their seeding. Well, it will, but these teams, both teams are in and out. And Kevin, think about the fact that last year, Boise State was 18-4, and four, headed for at least an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. They lost their last three regular season games. They lost in the first round of the Mountain West, and they missed out. They're not going to miss out this year. How about that nice sneak inside by Matt Bradley? He got the two. And that is now four offensive rebounds in this game for San Diego State against a team that simply doesn't give up very many offensive rebounds. Max Ryers and Lucas Milner have now checked in for the team in white, Boise State. They got down low. He's defended by Seiko. Change for the Aztecs. Shaver defended by Pulliam with a three, and it was partially deflected, and it's grabbed by Bradley. Boise State is at all three of their threes. San Diego State, five misses. They've got three offensive rebounds, and that long shot won't drop with the rebound by the junior Max Rice. Well, that's the coach's gift. Yes. <laughs> and Pulliam is, not an, is another guy who's not a great three-point shooter, only 32%. There's a foul, and it goes on Seiko. Wednesday, nine celebrities trade their world of luxury to live in the jungles of Panama. It's the most dangerous celebrity adventure ever attempted. Then why are they doing it? Beyond the Edge <laughs> series premiere Wednesday after Survivor. <laughs> They're adventurers. They must be. Right here on CBS. Tied at 11. He got tried to find a sliver of room and it quickly evaporated. The coach's son, Rice, down low once again to Acott. Working on the defense of Seiko with a fadeaway. Bradley is right there. He's got six rebounds. Now Bradley's their leading scorer. He's got the ball right now. And he feeds to Mayich. And outside, it's Bradley for three. Rebound inhaled by Acott. Down court, Milner knocked away. Bradley is everywhere. Boise State is not a team that runs very much, Kevin. And that was a bad pass on that particular play. But you're right, Bradley, he hasn't been scoring a lot, but he's dominated the game so far. A rope is in to Mayich. Bradley. There's a travel. We talked about San Diego State's defense, but Boise State's defense is really good as well. And that was just great help. Bradley thought he had a lane to the basket, but that lane closed very quickly and he couldn't get himself stopped. At the top of the show, Evan was talking about the depth of San Diego State, and they go 9 10 deep. And they've relied on that. They play, as Dan was just alluding to, such great defense, it can be tiring. And so he's got to keep them fresh on the floor. Well, and it's not just defense. They played nine guys last night, Kevin, and every single one scored. Yeah. Marcus Schaefer. Battled a non-COVID illness earlier in the week. He missed some practice time, but back he is, hale and hearty and ready to go. He's got to move the ball from side to side against this team. Rice, a three. And it was contested nicely that time by Chad Baker Mazzara. He is the sixth man award winner in the conference. And they will turn it back over. Uh, Rice was way too deep in the mountains on that one. Kevin yep, he, was. he had to launch it because the clock was running down. Baker Mazzara puts up a shot. And Rice will grab it inside. And Baker Mazar comes off the bench, Kevin, and he is just a bundle of energy. It's loose. Dagenhart picks it up and finds Rice alone on that baseline. Good assist. Kevin, somehow Rice was able to hide right yeah. next to the basket. Third place, regular season of the Mountain West for the Aztecs, the team in black. Back to Boise State and Colorado State. There's a whistle on the perimeter. That'll be blown on Shaver, who will pick up his second personal foul. So Dagenhart has been big. A couple threes and a good assist here. A wonderful find for two.
Tomorrow at noon Eastern over on CBS Sports Network. Catch the Women's Patriot League title game as Bucknell battles it out against American for a chance to compete in this year's NCAA Women's Tournament. Moments ago, Evan Washburn caught up with the coach of Boise State, Leon Rice. Well, Coach, we know what you're facing defensively. What's been the best version of offense against San Diego State to start this one? Well, you know, you got to get some ball movement. You got to handle the press to get into. So, you know, one time we took 15 seconds to handle the press, and then you're terminating. So we got to get a little more tempo. We got to get a rebound. Then we can run at them. Then, you know, then we get the ball moving a little easier, and that's what we got to, you know, so it starts with stops, starts with us rebounding the ball. Coach, thanks. Leon Rice for 11 years was a Gonzaga assistant to Mark Few. And he's come here now in his 12th season with Boise State. He's got more wins than any other coach before him. Runs a terrific program and enjoying some great success right now. He had four all-conference players this year. A record for the team. And he was absolutely right with what he was telling Evan. They've really had a hard time rebounding the ball defensively. They've given up six second-chance points, and in a tight game, that can be decisive. Butler got it from Seiko. Acott is out there defending. Out of bounds, the ball deflected. Shot clock down at four. Uh, and the other thing, Kevin, if you can get a stop and get a rebound, then you can run the ball down the court. Right. And again, they're not a fast-breaking team, but at least San Diego State doesn't get a, isn't able to set that tough defense in the food court. Najee Smith has come in for Boise State. Erop is in. Tamayich is in. And San Diego State. Seiko will inbound four to fire. Tamayich, that's a three. And he put it down. The transfer from the University of Maryland, Joshua Tamayich. Knocks it down for the triple. And you see when they make a basket, Kevin, they can set that pressure. Uh oh A rope as the player fell, and a whistle. And a violation. Didn't cross the line in time. Ten-second violation, yep. and Brian Dutcher would have preferred they not call right, that. Exactly. Because, see, they had a basket. <laughs> Brian Dutcher, among all the head coaches, who started becoming a head coach from the 17-18 season on. He has 118 wins. That is the most of any coach since that year through this. That shows you what kind of program he's run and the success he's had. Tamayich had a three, but will take it down the lane. Oh, slammed in. A rope climbing the ladder in a 9-2 run for San Diego State. And the fifth offensive rebound, Kevin. For the Aztecs. In a game like this, rebounding is huge with two defensive minded teams. Second chance points, huge. There's a whistle. Everybody goes to the ball, nobody blocks out a rope, and a rope is a guy who plays with tremendous energy out there. You can see him coming from the left hand side of the screen. Nobody touches him. So, Dan, with these two teams, you ask the coaches key statistics to watch. Second chance points already. San Diego State, 8 0 over Boise State. And they got the rebounding edge by five already. Key jab. No shot attempts until right there. That's his first, and he nails it. And he's really good at getting the ball in the lane. We mentioned he's 6'7, he weighs about 200 pounds. Once he gets in the lane, he's hard to contest. Key jab has scored. 20 points or more for the last six. Seiko, double. And Tamayich puts up a mid-range rough head. Baseline knocked away, but retrieved by Rice, who caught one high. And Baker Mazzara was the one to get the coach's son and knock him to the floor. Uh, they're but go he's just going for the ball. But, but, but they are going to go take a look at it, Kevin. No, I, you know, he, he, the arm did come up there. And he caught him right on the neck, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> What's his major you saw him, drama? You saw, him, <laughs> you saw him grimace. To my edge, the senior from Spain. It caught him right in the jugular. Well, he, there's no question he got him in the neck, Kevin. And the, yeah. question, the question here, they're going over to look to see if it's a flagrant foul. And what they're looking at there, they're, I mean, there was nothing. That's sort of a basketball kind of play, but was there too much contact? Gene Steratore, our rules analyst, what did you see on this play, Gene? And Dan's at the table right. I think what you're looking at is, uh, is this is unwarranted? Is it not a basketball play? In my opinion, he's reaching for the basketball. He misses. 
And I think Rice does a pretty good job of embellishing that contact. It's a little delayed as he falls backward. But they do have to look. It, excessive will fall into that category uh, when they start to try and decide as well as to whether it's a flagrant one or not. Uh, to me, I feel like this is a basketball play. Uh, but there is, uh, there is contact to the neck. So that's what's going to take them to look at a little more specifically. That's a good explanation. Gene working his third game today. You know, a lot of people might think these guys take time out. Not Gene. No, 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 he, not Gene. He, he's no, not no. eating hot dogs. You know, sitting. Well, he might be. Well, maybe he is. But he's watching the game like all of us. Maybe and little doggies. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he is. And our veteran crew with a lot of tournament experience discussing it. And as Gene mentioned, the question here is, it was a basketball play. But even with the basketball play, if the officials rule that the contact was excessive, then it is a flagrant one foul. And here we're going to get an explanation. Flagrant one foul. Okay. Arm to the face. Unnecessary okay. conduct. Flagrant one. Thank you. All right, so they have ruled it a flagrant one foul because of the nature of the contact. It was contact, they said, to the face, but it was to the neck. And again, in that kind of a play, they just decided that the contact was, uh, Eric mentioned, unnecessary, but uh, excessive figures into there, too. That's the word Gene used. And the rule says the flagrant one foul is contact that is excessive in nature and or unnecessary, and that's what these guys decided. By the way, each of these officials have worked over 75 games this season and the resume will tell you they're amongst the best that's why they get a championship game like this here's rice gene gene what'd you think of the call i can i can see where they went and i think it's truly guys because of what you mentioned it's where that contact occurred when you get up into the head and neck area we see the swing at that point he's he's looking at you know swinging for the ball but when you get up into the head and neck area now the tendency would be in a protective mode to go flagrant one and i really don't disagree after looking at a couple replays and just fyi the hot dogs are pretty good <laughs> i knew i knew he was listening <laughs> thank you so boys you see and that's a three-point shot off by Kijab. Fought for and claim Armish. Offensive foul against Boise State. And that's two on Armish. And he, he is one of the best offensive rebounds, not only in the Mountain West, but in the country. But you expect Mensa to be a guy who's trying to block the shot, but instead he just gets great position and that shoulder going right into the chest, knocking him down. Moad Armish is a transfer from East Tennessee State from Belgrade, Serbia. Pulliam on the move again. He loves that little shot on the fly. He's got four. You have to keep him in front of you because, right. you know, I mean, it's not, some guys you can catch up if they get past you, but not him because he got that little floater before you can get back in front of him. Seiko with the kick. And Boise State will inbound on the far side. For Boise State, they won their first outright regular season conference championship in the Mountain West. And if they win, they'll be the fifth team in Mountain West history to win a regular season title and a conference tournament title. San Diego State did it last year. Key jab. Right into the defense of Matt Bradley. Seiko will come and double. Nice ball rotations, taking heart three, right down the hatch. What great ball Ooh, movement, wow. Kevin, and what great discipline. You saw Acott look at the shot clock. He knew how much time he had, and they were able to get a great shot at the end of the shot clock period. The freshman Dagan Hart has knocked down three threes. And Boise State leads by one. Pulliam threads a bounce pass inside. It was knocked away. Smith got a hand on it. Acott the other way. Rice will make a move. Key jab across the lane. Dagenhart locked and loaded with the miss three and picked up by Pulliam. He was, that was a deep one that time. Kevin, I'm not sure he knew how far away from the basket he was. Well, he took it from Reno. He was a long way away. And here we got Johnson. And now Seiko with Bradley, who's picked up by Key jab. Dancing. That's a two-point shot on the line, and Rice will lasso the ball. 
And they're going to get Dagan hard for blocking yep. out foul. Watch the stroke. Well, this is a great pass. Watch it. You get down, you see the shot clock. Kijab looks, he knows how much time is left, goes to Aycott and then over to Dagenhart, who is very close to the three-point line. The last miss, he was well beyond the coach's box. Dagenhart was going to go play at Gonzaga. He's from Spokane. Here's a drive from Bradley through two. Outside, Pulliam, thinking three. Najee Smith there to defend. Two-point shot. And retrieved by Seiko. He'll uncork a three. Rebound inside, collected by Acott. He's got four. He jabbed the other way, Seiko bumped him. And he'll pick up a foul. Kevin, and you can see what happens when Boise State is able to get a defensive rebound. They're able to get out, and even though they're not sprinting down the court, San Diego State has a harder time setting the defense when they're backpedaling, and the result there was a foul. The problem for Boise is they are really struggling on their defensive boards. Sago picked up his second. I think of San Diego State. They got home a little after midnight after playing a 9 o'clock tip in the semifinal. Smith will drive right down the lane, picked up by a rope. It's the toughest turnaround of any tournament team in the country to play with such a short amount of time between a semifinal and a final. And that's what San Diego State is doing here. Mensa will curl in. Gagenhart defends. Rebounded by Acott. And the other way, Kijab. Into the cheerleaders, into the front row. Boise stayed on top by one. They've led by four. The Mountain West Championship on CBS. Back in Las Vegas, taking a look at the Jersey Mike Subs game summary. Four threes by Boise State and their terrific freshman Tyson Dagenhart. Moments ago, Evan Washburn caught up with the coach of San Diego State, Brian Dutcher. Well, Coach, 12 of their points are from beyond the arc. How do you run them off the three here? They're shooting the ball well. And so they've got a couple off post doubles. We're trying not to let Key Jab go to work on us. And they've done a good job spraying it out. So we're going to have to decide if we're going to continue to double or maybe take it off and, and try to stay home one-on-one. -on -one. Appreciate the time. Thanks, Evan. Brian Dutcher, who is a part of uh, recruiting the Fab Five up in Ann Arbor for Michigan. He said, he, I waited till I was 58 years old to get my first head coaching job. For 23 years, he was an assistant. Fifth year as a coach, he was under the uh, legendary Hall of Famer, Steve Fisher, who built the culture that the Aztecs enjoy now, one of the most successful programs in the country. But that just said I waited till I was 58 to get my first head coaching job, and it was worth the wait. A rope inside, squeezing the trigger for two. He just bullied his way Ooh. to the basket. Wow. <laughs> you know, he's had some injury problems in his career, but when he plays, he plays hard. Acott on top. He's from Winnipeg. And Acott is a transfer from Arizona. Shot clock at nine. Game clock approaching seven. Rice will make a move through traffic, weaving, swerving, diving, cradling. And that on the floor is a foul. I think it's going to be a foul on Rice for I jumping think it on is. top. Yes. You know, it's just so hard. These guys do such a good job. You get past somebody, there's hands everywhere. And that's a rule. If you jump on top of somebody, it's an automatic foul. And that's exactly what Rice did. It looked like wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> playing a game of twister here at the free throw line now is Lamont Butler he is a sophomore from Moreno Valley California played at Riverside Poly High School the same high school as the legendary Hall of Famer Reggie Miller who will join Dan and I along with Dana Jacobson in the upcoming NCAA tournament and he gets it right there gear up with new cases of NCIS and NCIS Hawaii and join the teams as they solve Monday's NCIS and NCIS Hawaii. New episodes Monday at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Lamont Butler. Great on-ball defender. And he makes that shot, Kevin, so San Diego State can set the defensive pressure. Yep. Good point. Smith. Key jab. 
Kijab has only attempted two shots so far in this game. The defense has been very good against him. Dagan Hart off to Rice. Switch on defense. Shot clock at eight inside to Acox with a whistle and the foul. So, Dan, four teams right now, in the view of many, from this conference are going to get a bid tomorrow. Uh, and certainly Jerry Palm is among those. And Wyoming, you know, maybe they were a little bit worried after losing the game the, uh, last night. But according to Jerry Palm, there's only two bid stealers out there. So Wyoming's got to be feeling pretty comfortable right at the moment, too. Bob Butler just picked up his second personal foul for the team in black, San Diego State. Hijab, Acott, and defended on the play by Baker Mazzara. That's a foul, and Chad Baker Mazzara will pick it up. Number two on him. And you heard Brian Dutcher tell Evan, that, you know, maybe they got to take the double team off mm -hmm. because they're shooting the ball so well. And that was the situation where normally they might double team a guy like Acott at 6'8". You don't want to let him get alone inside, but they elected not to, and the result was a foul and two free throw opportunities. Emmanuel Acott, best season of his college career. He is a senior, and he has changed his game in his time at Boise. He only had taken 44 three-point shots in his first three years. This year, he's already made 53. <laughs> so as all big men are doing all over basketball, at every level, they're shooting from outside. Uh, coming to Boise, he got an opportunity to play in a system that encouraged him to do it. Not that they don't encourage shooting threes in Arizona. Right. Because they take a lot. Top third in the country in three-point percentage. Oh, look at this. Suffocating defense down low on Bradley. And who's that on? It's on, it's on Armush. It that's is. His third. Yep, it is. Maladin Armush. And number three. And that's a situation, Kevin, if he just goes over and stands there, he doesn't get the foul. But uh, a little bit of fake got him off his feet, and so now he's going to have to sit the rest of the half. They're going to bring in Lucas Milner, who is a senior from Olathe, Kansas, transfer from Johnson County Community College. At the free throw line, Matt Bradley. When Bradley came here as a transfer from Cal, it took him a while to kind of get used to his style. He's a lefty, and... It changed. In fact, they had to kind of tilt and change the offense a little bit because he was such a special player. Right. San Diego State is a team that has always relied very heavily on ball movement and player movement. But Bradley is a guy who has to have the ball in his hands, so they had to change the way they do things a little bit so he could maneuver with the ball. It took a while, but it is paid off. Right now, the Aztecs in black are playing the best basketball of the season. Shaver three. Milner got the ball inside, keeps it alive. Acott driving on Johnson. Wait, and that's just power, Kevin. You mentioned Acott's three-point shooting ability. Johnson's aware of that, so he went to defend the three, and Acott went right around him. Rashad Johnson. A rope knocked away. Acott the steal, the gallop around a rope. And a whistle and a foul called on the Aztecs of San Diego State. Well, well, Acott, go on a rope. Acott in the corner, just, I mean, you got to go defend that three, and Johnson got too close to him, and a rope. Now, he didn't have a lot of room, but this is really an impressive, physically strong play on the inside. Good defensive play, triggered it the other way. As Leon Rice was telling us last night, this is the best defensive team he has had in his 12 years in Boise. Well, it, it's hard to talk about great defensive teams when you play in the same league as San Diego exactly. State. I know it. <laughs> but they are an outstanding defensive team, this Boise State. One of the things that they've struggled with, not so much recently, but at, particularly at the start of the year, was their free throw shooting. At one point this it season, was. it was horrendous, wasn't they it? They were the third worst free throw shooting team in the country. <laughs> yeah. 356. Some people three. didn't even know there were that many teams <laughs> in Division <laughs> One. But over the last 16 games, yeah. they've been over 70%, but they have not shot. They're only three for six today. 
Akon's 59%. He's their point guard. He's a 6'8 point guard. He, he handles the ball most of the time, but uh, Key Jab can handle the ball some. Rice yeah, right. handles Everybody, the ball some. Right. Shaver handles the ball some, and some people think that's an advantage. Other people think it's a disadvantage to not have a designated point guard. Little shimmy there. Bradley. Now, how tough was that shot? Oof. Remember, Acott is right in his face, and Acott is six feet eight. Bradley's got five. A little full court pressure here by the Aztecs. And approaching five to play in the first half. Championship game from Vegas, Mountain West. Schaefer. Now the mismatch on Mensa. Acott, he'll let one rip from three. And the rebound inhaled there by Tomajic. Bradley again picked up by Kijan. Chiseling his way in to Mayich. Defense here by Kijan. Mensa almost had it off his fingertips and off of Boise State. The Aztecs of San Diego State will get it. Look at Bradley. I mean, he, that's, what he, that's what he does, Kevin. He dribbles that ball with his left hand. He crosses back over. He forces the defense to back off. And uh, Acott didn't back off very far, but that's why Bradley is such an outstanding offensive player. He's a guy capable of making tough shots. Each team right around 39% shooting. But another offensive rebound for San Diego State. Matt Bradley, driving hard inside, slicing to the rack, and it's picked up. Dagan Hart, hounded in his freight jacket and foul. I thought that really was a good defensive play by Milner, and then Dagan Hart inside, really gets a tough rebound. Milner steps over, jumps straight up in the air, so even though there was contact, there was no foul. And then interestingly, you didn't see it. Milner, after making that play, he took off down court. Had the foul not been called, he might have gotten the layup. Tamayich picks up his first. Tyson Dagenhart, 6'7 freshman. He was the Mountain West Freshman of the Week nine times. <laughs> the two-time Spokane High School Player of the Year, and he was the Washington State High School Player of the Year. Dagenhart was. Well, Boise State, they have missed. They're four for eight from the line now. They've given up eight offensive rebounds. They got to inbound. Hijab, who played at Oregon, he is transferred into the Boise State program. Into a thicket, and he misses the pass to Acott, a turnover. When you get into that thicket, you really have to be strong with the basketball. You can't wait for the referees to blow the whistle. You've got to understand you're going to get some contact in there. You've got to be strong with the ball. That time, he just the ball just dribbled out of his hands as he was trying to make a pass. San Diego State the other way. They played in this conference title game five consecutive years. Eight of the last nine and 12 of the last... 14 familiar territory for them Boise State the first time in the title game in the conference screen Mensa Pulliam Mensa Hacked away retrieved by Shaver and That was Dagan Hart inside with another wonderful defensive play didn't do anything except force Mensa to shoot over Shaver will find a way to knife his clay his way close and Mensa was with him. That's a foul Mensa picks it up that is the first on him with the Aztecs and Broncos separated by a point late first half. Fans, if you would now please stand and hold your signs to honor cancer survivors and to remember those we've lost to this terrible disease. The Mountain West Conference and the American Cancer Society want to recognize all of those who are part of a mission bigger than any one person. All throughout the arena, you'll notice we're surrounded by people who, in one way or another, have been affected by cancer. We are still too many, but we're fighting. 
At this time, wherever you are watching, please join the Mountain West Conference and the American Cancer Society as we recognize all of those who've been impacted by cancer. This moment serves as a reminder so that we can and we will defeat this disease. For more information about the American Cancer Society, Coaches vs. Cancer, and the fight against cancer, please visit www.cancer.org. And if we had a card, we would put the name Dick Vitale up there. And Dickie V, we welcome you back to the broadcast world after your fight, successful as you've told us publicly. And we wish you the very, very best as you continue to beat the disease. We're a very small fraternity in this broadcasting business. And guys like Dick Vitale are the people that have made college basketball what it is. And we celebrate with Dick and all of our friends over at ESPN in his return. The foul was on Mensa, and the free throw line is Marcus Shaver, a transfer from Portland, who's from Phoenix and a senior, a 1,500-point scorer in his career. He's at the line, Dan, a 77% free throw shooter for the Broncos of Boise State, who won the regular season championship in the Mountain West. Outright. Well, he's their best free throw shooter. But that uh, hadn't seemed to help today. They're now four for nine from the line. Interesting, interestingly, San Diego State is only three for seven from right. the free throw line. So neither team shooting it well from the line. You don't know if it's nerves or you don't know if it's just being tired. They, they all well, tuckered <laughs> out, aren't they? Oh, my goodness. Nice back in for Schaefer. Well, Kevin, playing in the championship game is a big thing. You know, winning the regular right. season, that's that's a great achievement. Mm -hmm. But to win the regular season title and to win the conference tournament. William gets it by midcourt. Three and a half to play in the half. Keep your eye on that Kijab Bradley matchup. Good screen, switch on defense, pull him on the move. Rebound, Mensa. Oh, rejected. Erased inside Milner. He's never had a bigger block. He jab moving the other way. With a foul called on Pulliam of the Aztecs, who picks up number one. Well, this is just a, an incredible block wow. shot. There's no contact with the body there. Mensa a little bit slow getting up, but I think that he wasn't worried about Milner being there. Milner only plays about six minutes a game. I know. All ball. That was so well timed. And if you like defensive basketball, rim protection, that was your play. That's only his eighth blocked shot of the season. I think he's surprised <laughs> Mensa. My goodness. Two times second team all conference Abu Kijap. Leading score, leads him in free throws attempted and made. And Dan, you had mentioned this earlier, he's averaged 14 a game this season, but over the last six games, he's had four of those six where he has scored 20 points or more. And, and now Kevin, he's got four. And Kevin, he's a kid with a big personality. Yeah, he, he, he does. Leon Rice was telling us how entertaining he is to be around and how he gets his teammates energized. A little bit of pressure. And that the, that, the purpose of that pressure is just to run some time off the clock. Now they drop back into their man-to-man. Bradley -man. moving on Kijab. Outside Baker Mazar. Oh, Milner just knocked down Mensa. I mean, just steamrolled him, plowed right over him. Well, the coach told him to block out, yes, and that's he what he was trying to do. And we've got a player, Emmanuel Acott, holding on, as you can see, to that left angle. Well, you know, you sure hope he's okay. He, he would be a big loss for Boise State. No I, didn't, I, the foul. I did not see what happened, but he was involved in that tangle. It was so congested in there. Yeah, right here. He comes down and he, oh, okay, he lands on the foot of Baker Mazzara. Mm. So they're going to go to the bench here. They're going to bring in Kuzmanovic, who is a sophomore from Serbia. And he'll take the place of Kijan. Uh, Akot, excuse me. 
Well, Kuzmanovic is another guy who doesn't play very much. About 11 minutes a game, right, Dan? Yeah, but he's only played in 20 of the 33 games. Nathan Mensa, high school in Nebraska. Kevin, just... suddenly this becomes a critical last two minutes and 30 seconds. Feels in this that half. way, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, because look at the players that are on the floor for Boise State, not their regulars. Milner, Hijab, got the screen, switch on defense now against Mensa. Underneath. Oh, ejected. That was erased. His first block shot. He tried to go under the basket to use the rim to protect him from Mensa, but Mensa was having none out of it. This is just a great job by Mensa. Wow, Mensa's the number one shot blocker in the conference. Kevin, look how close he stays to key jab, and that enables him to block that shot. We're having a defensive battle here. Coming up from our CBS studios in New York, AT&T at the half, Greg Clark and Seth will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights from this busy day of college basketball. Watch who's in, who's out, and who will be waiting for their name to be called tomorrow night on Selection Sunday. That's coming up next on AT&T at the half. Who's Monich? Monovich will be inbounding the ball. And on top it goes, Kijap. Dagenhart, short. It was a two, and it's picked up by Trey Pulliam from Bryan, Texas. Baker Mazzara will try down low. Outside Pulliam, Rice on him. Johnson on the perimeter, and has room. But they're gonna give Johnson some room. He's not a, a three-point shooter. Bradley. Slipped. Baker Mazzara. Mensa grabs the ball with the rebound. Another one. Mensa will go, creeping his way in, doubled on the play. Pulliam, shot clock at 10. Stepped out of bounds on the drive. Trey Pulliam of the Aztecs. And that, Evan Washburn is a turnover for San Diego State. Yeah, Kevin and Emmanuel Acott went right to the locker room. We saw a few minutes ago, looked to tweak that left ankle, left foot. Noticeable limp will work for an update to start the second half. He's their leading assist man. Evan, thank you. Key jab will jab his way in there. With a foul. And it comes at 124. Bradley will pick up his first. We talked about Kevin if you're going to try to drive into that San Diego State defense You better be strong with the basketball and key jab was that time and this is a guy who he can make the three-point shot But he is really good when he attacks the basket So when the Broncos of Boise State won their first outright regular season conference championship this year It was the first time for this program in over three decades it's the second overall for the program. They were in the big sky, and they won that back in 1988. They have earned a share of the conference titles seven times. They've won seven overall across four different leagues, but the first in over three decades, they won an outright conference regular season championship. A lot to be proud of. And the second drained by Kijap. San Diego State the other way, Dan, they missed seven straight. San Diego State, they're a team that's built on defense, and they have a tendency to go into some offensive droughts. Pulliam trying to creep in. Bradley with a three, which will miss. Mensa again there. Gets the ball. Milner knocks it away. A couple big rim-protecting plays by him. Rice has it faking, driving up and off and around, and Mensa will... Get the rebound. Matt Bradley. Driving and puts one up. Diving in there. Offensive foul. His second. Dagenhart took it inside. Boy, Dagenhart is doing everything you can ask a player to do, both offensively and defensively. And Kevin, sometimes there's a question, but Dagenhart is standing there waiting for him for almost two dribbles. Bradley really tried to force that one. Boy, he just rocketed right in there, and Dagenhart knew it was coming. And he took it hard. 
Quinn Milner's going to the bench and he's getting a big hand well, he should. from the Boise State fans. He has really had a good first half and they needed it because Armush got into foul trouble. Uzmanovic will get it on the wing. He jabbed, forcing his way in, fouled as he was trying to go along that baseline, took one in the back of the ear, and the whistle and a foul. And Seiko picks up his third for San Diego State with an elbow right there. And Baker Mazzara. That was, not, yeah, that was on Baker Mazzara, but I think Seiko got the foul. Seiko got the foul. Baker Mazzara got the ear. <laughs> well, it's always good when you have the ear. Yeah, absolutely. Right, absolutely. Right. The ear's better than the foul, particularly it's somebody else's ear. Yep. 26 wins, a program record, as we said earlier, for this Mountain West champion, Boise State, number one seed coming in. They've had 20 wins or more eight of the last 10 years. And Dan, when you think of all of college basketball over the last decade, there are only 17 teams that have had 20 wins or more eight of the last 10. Only 17 Division I schools, and they include Duke and Kansas, Gonzaga, North Carolina, Kentucky, Villanova, the big names, and Boise State. Seiko got it. Eight for 16 from the free yes. throw line. Wow. Tired or scared or maybe a little bit of both. A lot on the line at the Mountain West Championship. Well, we're proud to say coming up to CBS this April, New Orleans will welcome the greatest players from the historically black colleges and universities in the inaugural HBCU All-Star Basketball game. That's Sunday, April 3rd, 4 Eastern. Our uh, director, Mark Grant, will be there covering that game. It's all right here on CBS. And here you see a couple teams, Norfolk State and Texas Southern. Norfolk State, third title for and them. And they're second straight in the MEAC. And the MEAC, them? the MEAC is a really good league. It is. Some terrific players, outstanding coaching. Hats off to them. And the final 10 seconds here of the first half. Pulliam, Seiko faking, firing. And Milner in there to inhale the rebound. And a long shot, good if it goes, and that's it. In a first half that had six ties and seven lead changes. No lead by either San Diego State or Boise State larger than four but san diego state scoreless the last five minutes and 42 seconds three point boise state lead at the half to evan washburn well coach how do you have this lead despite the 12 offensive rebounds and some struggles at the line yeah it, it's just a war out there and you know they're a physical physical team they're physical on the glass they're physical guarding the ball and we kind of toughened up as we went along and you know they they slugged us in the nose and then we responded and that's what we're gonna have to do in the second half because it's just gonna be a battle and whoever's tougher i'm sure you'll get more at halftime but if you were to lose a cut what would it mean to you guys Ooh, I, i'm not wishing for that that would be rough thanks coach. one of the great men in college basketball leon rice 11 years at gonzaga assistant who finally got the head coaching job he wanted at boise state and he's turned that program around it's the Broncos on top by three at the half. Let's take you to Craig Gumbel in our CBS studios in New York. All right, thank you, Kevin, who is not in Atlantic City. at and at the half. <laughs> Add another team to the field of 68. We'll get you all caught up on conference tournament action after this. 5G, fast, reliable, and secure. Hi, everyone. Welcome to at and at the half alongside Clark and Seth. I'm Greg. The score in Las Vegas, Boise State, with a three-point lead on San Diego State, 28-25, as you both have expressed so eloquently for much of this day. The two games these, these teams have played earlier this year are very much alike, and this one is following the same path. The aggregate score in the two games that Boise State won during the regular season was 100-94 to for two games. So that's an average of 50-47, to and we're kind of tracking that way. And as you heard Leon Rice talk about, it's a physical game, it's a tough game, it's a possession-by-possession possession game. And we've got a freshman here who is one of many that we'll be watching in the NCAA tournament. 
that have had really outstanding seasons. That's Tyson Degenhart. He knocks down three threes, but he's also very adept at the defensive end of the floor. Has excellent savvy. Nice assist right there. He's had a couple of assists, and there he is facing the floor and knocking down the three. But a really well-rounded, mature game for that young man for Boise State. And he's making some buckets, which is what San Diego State needs to do. And uh, if you can't do it from the outside, you can do it from the inside, and you can do it on the offensive glass. How about 12 offensive rebounds mm. for San Diego State, outscoring the Bronx 8-2 to two in second-chance points. That's Matt Bradley. They really need to get him going offensively with the miss, but Nathan Mensa is there for the cleanup. And then this is just pure hustle. Matt Bradley finding a loose ball, and then watch Aguek a rook with the finish and uh, his teammates enjoying that. The good news is I do think the winning team will have 50 points in this game. So you do? It will okay. count. I think that'll happen. You have too. to have 50 for it to count. That's my rule. <laughs> that is good news. That is good. 28-25 at the break. CBS Sports coverage of the Mountain West Championship is sponsored by Buick, the official SUV of the NCAA. Taco Bell's Toasted Breakfast Burritos. And by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. We're taking a look at the Buick first half stance. And you can see at the very bottom there, both teams missed a combined 14 field goals. Nothing going in over the last five minutes and 42 seconds. Dan, you said as we're signing on the air today, there's going to be a lot of defense, and you were right. Well, Kevin, these are two really competitive teams. They played two really close games during the year. They're not offensive juggernauts. This is the third game in three days for both of them. This is exactly the kind of game we expected. For On the offensive end, the big plus has been Tyson Dagenhart for the Broncos. He has knocked down three three-point baskets. That's really one of the big differences in the game. And for the Aztecs, their offense has basically been built around offensive rebounds. They have 12 offensive rebounds. They have eight second-chance points. And on a team that only scored 25, eight is a big number. One of these teams 20 minutes away from hanging a banner. Let's swing it over to Evan Washburn. Kevin spoke with Brian Dutcher, and he agrees with you, Dan. He said both teams are playing on tired legs, and that's why you're seeing some of the inefficiency on the offensive end. He wants to see his team try to get to the foul line more in this second half, just eight attempts in the first half, and he felt like they're fouling too much defensively. Good sign, guys. Emmanuel Acott out on the floor, suffered what looked to be a left ankle foot injury late in that first half, but moving well. All right, Evan, thank you. Milner's going to start on the floor, starting the second half for Boise State. Mensa was on him, screen right there. Now Mensa goes over on Acott. Shots way off, a collision inside. And San Diego State the other way, they've missed 10 consecutive shots. And sometimes when each of these teams is playing so well defensively, it would be to your advantage to push the ball up the court and try to get an easy one. Matt Bradley. Lamont Butler. Up and down it goes with a dive for two. And that is exactly what Brian Dutcher told Evan he needed his team to do. Take and attack the basket and get to the free throw line. Here it's going to be, this is an unbelievably tough shot. So they get to the free throw line, but the added bonus is it's an and one. Dagenard picked up his second personal foul for the Broncos at the free throw line. Member of the conference all defensive team, Lamont Butler. Kevin just showed you there, that was his eighth point of the game, and that's more than his season average. Right. And this is something that we've seen from the Aztecs throughout this tournament. Guys are stepping up, up and down the line. Shaver. Screen, here's a three. And it will ricochet out of bounds. Third meeting this season between the two. Boise State won the first two, but by a total of only six points. Wow, that, remember we talked about defense, Kevin? That right. first game, the final score was 42 to 37. Wow. It's like they played it without a shot clock. <laughs> Back when you played. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> Johnson is swinging around Butler. Bradley deep. Pull in. It's Bradley around Acott in the 15-footer. Pushed. And a foul called on Acott. 
We got number one struggling stars for these teams. And Bradley has been such an important part of their offense. That's probably a bigger struggle. But Shaver, I mean, he averages 14, almost 14 points a game. And to be 0 for 3, only three field goal attempts, hasn't made any of them. Matt Bradley at the line. So after only eight trips to the free throw line in the first half, here we haven't played two minutes yet, and this is already their third free throw attempt. Bradley, a couple weeks ago, was the National College Basketball Player of the Week. In three games for Bradley, over a six-day period a couple weeks ago, he scored a total of 80 points, and he was the number one player in the country and recognized as much. Well, he That's can, how explosive he can yeah, be. He can put the ball in the basket, yes, he so can. he can't relax. Acott, Dagenhart, Kijan. Acott, Mensa defends. Dagenhart, shot clock at seven. Acott, three. Dagenhart got the ball, vacuums it in, and puts it down. Three tough shots, long shots in this second half by Boise State before Dagenhart was able to get that rebound and get an easier one. 11, Dagenhart, one of the best freshmen in the country. Bradley, they'll put up a three, ring it up! Matt Bradley from outside. And that's good news for San Diego State, bad news for Boise State if Bradley's gonna heat up. Bounds can the world's most advanced super soldier save Earth from the Covenant? Find out in the new original series, Halo, streaming March 24th exclusively on Paramount Plus. 7:40 to go. Broncos in white. A Boise State began the season three and four. They've gone 23 and three since. Changed the lineup, brought the freshman in. Shaver will wiggle and get it! That was tough. Racing the other way, Butler. Sidesteps, takes it in. Offensive foul, wipe it away. Butler will pick it up. We talked about Shaver needing to get his offense going. This is his first field goal of the game. And that was a really tough one. And Dagenhart draws the foul down on the other end, Kevin. Dagenhart has really helped him here recover from a slow start in the second half. Butler just picked up the foul, and Butler's got three for the Aztecs in black. Kijak. Acott. Taking hard on the wing. A rope is on him, off the bench, and in the game. Armush. Mensa right there, swats it away. Shot clock at seven. Really good patience by Mensa. He just waited for Armish to finish his move. Armish goes back to that left hand, and Mensa <laughs> just does a nice job maintaining position. Doesn't go for any fakes. You take all his defensive numbers. Nathan Mensa is one of the top ten defenders in all of college basketball. Brilliant defensive player. Down low now. He's watching Shaver. Shot clock violation. Kevin. It's so difficult to take the ball past that perimeter defense of San Diego State. We saw Shaver just slither to the basket a few seconds ago, but not that time. San Diego State has won six Mountain West Conference tournaments, including last year. Bradley quickly double, they blitz him. Acott deflects Bradley with it. Men's of the screen. Shot clock at five, into key jam, a reach, a key jam, and a foul. Bradley just puts so much pressure on Kevin. He pounds that ball and pounds that ball. He does. And that's what you were talking about. That's not really typical San Diego State offense over the last few years, but that's the way they their offense has evolved with Bradley being a key. San Diego State has won six in a row, 11 of 12 and 12 of 14, playing the best basketball of the season for them. A rope inside, got the feed from Butler. It's knocked out of bounds. It is off San Diego State. A rope didn't realize he had a lane to the basket mm. that he had beaten Acott. 
Acott tries to avoid him here, and a, and a rope just doesn't realize how much room he has. He just can't control the ball. Boise State in their first conference championship game in the Mountain West. Jagan Hart, a rope is on him. Armish, oh, that's almost intercepted by Pulliam. Four minutes gone. And we're down to 10 on the shot clock again. Now down to five. He jab inside, and he'll fade away oh. and trim oh. the <laughs> shot. A tough one as he bounced. Wow, was that a tough play and a clutch play with the clock running down. That will go through. Nice basket and 10. Lamont Butler, you said it before, he averages seven. He's already over his average. He's got 10 here this afternoon. Pulliam just about pickpocketed Shaver. He jab out to Dagenhardt, who tries to split the defense as he slashes inside and a whistle. And a foul. And it goes on the Aztecs. A rope will pick it up. 15.09 left in a one-point game Mountain West Championship on CBS. Right now, let's revisit our fast analysis presented by AT&T 5G. But early in the game, it was three-point shooting by Boise State that got him going. Great ball movement. Tyson Dagenhart knocks down the three. But that was countered by San Diego State in the first half with their ability to rebound the ball after misses. They had 12 offensive rebounds. Now, it just sort of turned around a little bit, Kevin. Boise State made their first three three-point field goals. They're only one for nine since. And the Broncos, they only had three field goals inside in the first half, but they've already got three field goals inside here in the second half. And Dagenhart has been in the middle of everything. Hey, we come to you from Las Vegas, the Mountain West Conference Tournament here. Also, the Pac-12 West Coast Conference. The WAC is here, the Big Sky, Big West, and the scouts will tell you that they felt this was the best tournament out of all those conferences. More here to watch, more to enjoy, best competition across the lane, and he got it to go. Tough play, Key Jam. TJ has two baskets in the second half, and they couldn't be any tougher. I slipped Butler, regains his footing. Bradley on top. Key jabs on him. And Bradley chiseling, stripped of the ball. Key jab got it in the whistle. And I think Bradley fouled Key jab. I mean, he goes into Kick. traffic, and we talked about the fact that you got to be tough with the ball. Well, he was tough with the ball right there and somehow got it to go in with his left hand. Then a steal on the other end, and he got fouled. San Diego State, the leader in rebounding here this afternoon. They're plus two, but the number one rebounding team in the conference, Boise State, number one in the Mountain West. But it's so even right now, in a game where defense is the calling card for both teams, second chance points, rebounding so important. Oh, nice spin. Good fake. Inside! Armish with the flush. The feed by Kijan. That's what Armish does. He hangs around the basket. When Mensa went to help out, Armish made himself available, and Kijan found it. A rope will probe. Dagenhardt defends. Picked up by Shaver. He's out of the block and off to the races and going the other way for the Bronco. Regular season champions in the Mountain West. Dagenhardt inside with a fake. Shot back up and in. Armish is there. And a 10-2 run by Boise State. And they pulled on top by five. Their biggest lead. You're getting it done inside. Butler accelerates. And Bradley will take aim. Butler collapsed the defense, and Bradley made him pay for it. Seiko now goes on Acott. Outside, it's Kijan across the lane. A rope was reaching in. 
This this key jab, he spins on Bradley, draws Mensa, and that leaves Armisha all alone. And then Bradley, he's to talk about all alone. Eventually, somebody gets there, but again, they collapsed the defense, kicked it out for three. Seiko just picked up his fourth, and he will hit the bench along with Nathan Mensa. This is what we're talking about, Kevin, a turnaround from the first half, and it was San Diego State getting it done inside. In the game now, Diabate. Oh, intercepted, Pulliam got it. Foot race with Shaver. He'll float to the rack. Well, it's really tough to make a pass all the way across the court like that against the San Diego State defense. Little 5 nothing run, tied at 40. They got to hurry. Key jab. Acott, and they set with Shaver. Boy, that was really Ooh, close to man, a second You're not kidding. You're not kidding. Bradley will defend. Outside it goes. Three, Acott. And off the rim and over the backboard, as you can see, in 12.33 to play in regulation. And they'll take out Emmanuel Acott. He'll get a breather. Kevin, we had a little bit of an offensive spurt there. <laughs> right. You were kind of stunned. <laughs> Max, I'm stunned by many things. <laughs> I know. Max Rice has checked in the foul story right there. Seiko with four. San Diego State, they shot well the second half, five of six. Pulliam against Rice. What a shot. Butler, that's a three. And Butler continues to have a big game. Butler. At the very tip of an 8-0 run. Butler's got 13. And a couple threes. And he is tied with Bradley in scoring honors for San Diego State. And a long shot outside. Kijab can't get it. Retrieved in the corner by a rope. Down by five, San Diego State is now up by three with an eight-nothing run. They won it all if they hit the final drop in the tank. Butler. Butler's got it, maneuvers, and feeds inside. He about he can't get it right on the doorstep. Armish is there with the rebound. Boise State didn't move the ball at all last time. They got to get the ball going side to side, or they're never going to penetrate this defense. Shaver drills it from outside. Or they could just take a couple of dribbles yep. and shoot a three. That'll work, that. too. That'll do it. <laughs> That's Shaver's first three-point basket. That is huge for Boise State. Ties it up, 11 to play. Diabata didn't even play last night for San Diego State. Drive here by a rope. Ooh. Dagan Hart hits the deck. Couple runs, one by Boise State, but now San Diego State. And we're tied at 43. Back in Las Vegas in time now for the Capital One rewarding performance. San Diego State is the first team in Mountain West Conference history to reach the finals of the conference tournament five consecutive seasons. They won it back in 18, won it last year, dropped two straight title games to Utah State in between. And two very accomplished coaches, one coaching in his fifth title game in a row and the other one in his first in the Mountain West. Well, Brian Dutcher's guys, uh, you know, their defense has continued to be tough, Kevin, but they've come out here in the second half. They're shooting six of eight from the field. They've made all their free throws, all their threes. Evan, we're down to 10.45 to play in this one. Kevin, it's going to be who can last longer right now. You can see from both huddles, guys are gassed. The boot key jab specifically trying to stretch out his left leg, get fluids in. The three games in three days taking a toll. Matt Bradley with a nice spinner inside. First team all-conference. Newcomer of the year in the conference. Played in the Pac-12, and now he plays in the Mountain West. And he has put his fingerprints on this game and this team and this season. Uh, and uh, Kevin, again, they've now made seven for their first nine field goal attempts in the second half. 
Pocket pass, Shaver into Armish. Now outside, Acott. Shot clock at six. The defense by Pulliam. He's doubled inside by Tomajic. Travel. Wipe it away. Well, you get inside against that defense. Watch them collapse. His right foot is his pivot foot, and he moves that. Trey Pulliam, Brian, Texas. Transfer from the ball, Community College. On the fly, puts it up with the miss. With the rebound inside by Rice. And a whistle inside, blown with 9.53 to go in the half. And Pulliam, Dan Bonner picks up his second. And that's what Brian Dutcher was upset about in the first half. He told his guys at halftime, don't foul 94 feet from the basket. And that was a 94 foot away from the basket foul. I just saw Brian Dutcher. This program has been to the NCAA tournament eight times in the last 12 years, including last season. They were down by five. They lead by two. Under ten. They double wake up. Picked up by Najee Smith. Smith had, Smith had a big game last night. He did, didn't he? He was, he was terrific. Ten points in the semifinal against Wyoming. And he averages five. He doubled his game totals. Shot clock at four. Schaefer drives on Mensa. Another block! Erases the shot. Three block shots. Racing the other way. Bradley tries to feed inside and it ricochets out of bounds. Kevin, I don't know that the formula for success is trying to run the clock down. And they're not trying to, but the defense forces them to run the clock down. Then you've got to make a play like this at the end of the shot clock. You can see there as he goes by, there was only three seconds left on the shot clock. You have no choice. And when you have no choice, Mensch makes you pay for it. Bradley coming off a screen, but they find Mensa inside. Armish is there. They got tangled up, and it is off of Boise State. And the Aztecs will inbound. Armish going after the ball, and it's tipped away by Najee Smith. Number 23 reaches in right there. I don't think Armish touched anybody. Remember, he's got three personal fouls, a big guy. Tomajic, oh, knocked away by Smith. Did he make the steal? Diving for it, did not save it. It's out of bounds. But a great effort by Najee Smith. He's out of Spokane, Washington. Now, there was no possession there by Boise State, so the shot clock will not reset. Stays at 15. 9.08 in the second half. Winner automatic berth, but this conference expecting four teams, including these two, to get a bid tomorrow on Selection Sunday right here on CBS. Nine to play. Bradley, 15 foot foot away, no. And picked up by Schaefer. Tough to get it over Acott. Followed by Butler. Drives inside as he penetrates. Hits the deck and fouled on the play. Wheeling to the rack. And I think Bradley was the one to get him. Kevin, that's just an aggressive play. I think he surprised everybody by going to the basket so quickly. There was 22 seconds left on the shot clock, but that's what happens when you go to the basket. Mens is waiting back there for you. Bradley picked up his third. And that's the thing, Dan, with a big player like Menser, who is such a great rim projector, one of the top 10 defensive players, as we said a couple times, in the country, in the headband. You, you can't go in there blind. You've got to see where you're going. <laughs> well, it certainly doesn't help. Menz is back there whether you can see him or not. <laughs> That's a great shot, guys. Shaver, 77%. That's her first free throw attempt in the second half, Kevin. They were there 16. They made... Attempted 16 in the first half, hurt themselves, only making eight, but this is the first trip to the line in the second half for the Broncos. We've had 11 ties and 12 lead changes. Key jab on that bench. San Diego State has led by as many as three. Boise State's lead has grown as high as five. Right yeah. outside, Trey Pulliam. I want to have Kijab ready for down the stretch. Mensa. 
a rope. Baker Maraza. Mazzara can't get the shot. Out of bounds it goes. And they're going to discuss it. Baker Mazzara took the shot, and they're going to say it goes the other way. And uh, Boise State will get it. Not unless Brian Dutcher gives the ball back. Okay, right. he just did. That ball's off Baker Mazar's right. No, that's actually Mensa that hit the ball. The last person to touch that right. ball is Mensa. It hit his right hand. And even though Acott's arm was swinging down, the ball went off Mensa. Good call by our veteran crew. Shaver accelerates into Mensa. Another block four. And it's ricocheted and picked up by Pulliam, galloping the other way for the Aztecs. Get it in there, Kevin, and Mensa comes. you got to find the open man. I thought Armish was right there in pretty good position. Foul Rice on Baker Mazzaro. And a timeout taken in 7.53. Tied at 45. Rice picks up his second. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Last five winners of this tournament, San Diego State playing in its fifth consecutive championship game in the conference. And Boise State is here for the first time and looking for their first ever Mountain West tournament title. There were two fouls, the offensive foul on Pulliam on well, Kevin, the we're right. Con we're confused here, and that's not too hard to confuse us, but look on both <laughs> sides of the screen. On the left side of your screen, we had a foul called, but the question is where which foul happened first. On the left side of your screen, there was a foul, but on the right side of the screen, pulling and push. And so not only they're looking to see which foul occurred first, but whether or not that's a flagrant. You know, Gene Steratore, who joins us, our rules and almost looked like the offensive foul preceded the defensive foul. They're really, really close, Kevin. And, and, and if, if, you know, they possibly could come out with a simultaneous personal foul which would be committed by each team at approximately the same time and not players that are playing against each other. So in this case, if they happen to have simultaneous personal fouls and that hand check 10-1-4 on Rice happens almost at the same exact time, if they put that in the category, they will not shoot free throws and they'll just go to the point of interruption and they'll give the ball to that team. Let's hear what David Hall is giving Dan at this time. So that's, you go. that's it. That's all you got. That kills the play. See, if Dan would take his headset and put it right by him, we could have heard the... But anyway, tell us what he said. <laughs> Gene, I was trying to help. Gene, I want you to know I'm, I'm trying to help I, I think I think we, we need to have Gene make the... But anyhow, what they did is they... Uh, David Hall came over and said that, that they ruled that the offensive foul on the right side of the court was the foul that occurred first. The offensive foul. Right. This foul occurs first, and that cancels out to this foul. And there's no flagrant foul. It's just an offensive foul. Gene, did you see it that way as well? Well, you know what? They're, they're really close. But listen, that's the beauty of replay now and having the ability to go back and frame by frame them, right? And you see now, you look at it, it's very brief, but the offensive foul does precede. So they went with exactly what replay showed them. Gene, thank you. Tied at 45, under eight to go. He jab in, Rice, Armush, and he's double. Mensa on him. He jab, a rope there, screen, and a switch. Now they go at Baker, Mazar, and he got it to go inside on the doorstep. 11 now for Abu, he jab. And he's made three shots all like that in the second half. Kevin. Yeah, he's just right. really tough to guard when he gets that close to the basket. There's a six man in the conference, Baker Mazzara, who gets off to a rope, who's guarded by Smith. Rope is really effective when he can get that close to the basket, Kevin. He's only about 6'6", but he's got long arms and a big, wide frame. And when he gets down close, he's hard to stop. 39% shooting for the Broncos. Chiseling his way in, now doubled key jam. It's Rice. Rejected inside. Mensa hit the deck on a scoop and a foul. And that will go on Chad Baker Mazar. Kevin, 
key jab set up a great play for Rice. Rice is a guy who can shoot the three, but he wasn't ready to squeeze the trigger. And so he passed up an open three and drove the ball to the basket. Very fortunate to get fouled. Coach's son will be at the free throw line. Baker Mazzara will pick up the foul, and that will be the third on him. Rice, an 80% free throw shooter from Bishop Kelly High School in Boise. And part of this 26 win season, a record for the program. Outright conference regular season champion in the Mountain West in the number one seed. This Wednesday, the new season of Survivor is here. More fun, more dangerous, with more shocking twists than ever before. The monster is back and it's hungry. <laughs> new Survivor this Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. Let's see Bradley back in, Kevin, and let's see if he can get going offensively again. He's matched up against Kijab. William to Butler. A rope. Dagan Hart defends. Knocked away and picked up by Kijab. The volleyball move by Armish. Dagan Hart thought and kicks it back. Kijab will survey. Dagan Hart's got to get out of there. Kijab will try to machete his way in and can't. Rice, three. And Menza cleans the glass. Kevin, he's got to get a little closer than that. He had the opportunity to take a shot about four feet closer. Menza's got ten rebounds and controls on top. Matt Bradley will survey with Kijab's defense right there. Shot clock at four. Pulliam defended by Rice and a floater. Rebound by Rice climbing the ladder inside. That time Boise State made him run the shot clock down to five, take a tough shot. Five and a half to go. Armish with a spin and a drive and a miss. Pulliam will take the rebound. Racing the other way. Flying on the wing, can't get it to go, Butler. Tegenhart gets the ball. His rebound will then be triggered off to Shaver. Screen, here's a three. Rice got it. Tegenhart back pedals. Shaver on top. He jab inside. Armish pulls the trigger. Got it to go. Mensa the foul, second on him. Kevin, what a sequence. Really a nice job by Rice. I don't know how he recovered that ball, but excellent passing. And this is a situation where Mensa's got to go out and guard Armish, or guard Kijab. And Armish makes a really tough play before Mensa can recover. Senior from Serbia, Armish. Menza with the rebound, and there's a whistle. Bradley stepped into the he lane did. early, so yes, there's a lane did. violation. Lane, Armish, you not don't a, see it often. Yeah, not a good free throw shooter. Bradley right, right there yep. steps in. And Armish is only 43%, and he hits that. And Boise State's on an 11 to 4 run. Their lead is up to four with 4.52 to go. Championship game of the Mountain West. Our clock is at 4.52 here in the second half. The Broncos of Boise State have never won. Mountain West Championship. Aztecs won just last year. Both teams are pretty much assured of being in the NCAA tournament. Give us a couple players to watch here down the stretch. Well, Kevin, I think we watched the key guys down the stretch, and it was, speaking of that key jab, we talked about him before the game for Boise State. He has sort of become the dominant force here in the second half, and Bradley certainly for San Diego State. And those two guys are going up against one another on both ends of the court. Kevin, interestingly enough, 
San Diego State has shot the ball very well here in the second half. They've had eight misses, but no offensive rebounds after 12 offensive boards in the first half. It's Butler on top, works around Shaver, penetrates inside. There's a foul, and Marcus Shaver of Boise State is assessed his third personal foul. And another interesting thing, Kevin, if this comes down to who can make free throws, San Diego State is a better free throw shooting team, although they're not a great free throw shooting team. They shoot under 70%. Here's the matchup we talked about. We talked about Bradley. Pulliam. Shot here. Butler got the three. Big time triple. Lamont Butler. He's got 16. He averages seven a game, and now the pressure turned up by the Aztecs. And the Broncos get a pass midcourt and approach him four to play. Butler is a 29% three-point shooter. He's three for three today. And a big, big game. They're playing Twister on the floor. Shaver trying to dig it out. There's the whistle. Boy, and they're really upset over there on the Boise State bench. That's a possession there is in favor of San Diego State. With the tie-up. And here, uh, I mean, this is everybody backs off Butler, and you should, but maybe not today. He's three for three. Leon Rice was convinced that this was a foul. This is just a great job by Pulliam to dive down, not dive on top of Shaver, but dive down next to Shaver and go fighting for the ball. Tamaya Chillin down. Pulliam's got it. San Diego State, led by Butler, 16-15 for Bradley. Pulliam with six, makes a move. Rice is on him. He'll dance with under four to go. Bradley, key jab on him. Shot clock at five. It's a two, and it's short with the Rice rebound and Boise State the other way. That was pretty good defense, but Bradley makes more of those than he misses. He's so good coming off that screen for the jump shot. They're sort of leaving Rice alone. He's got to get closer to the three-point line, so when they kick it out, he's got a reasonable chance for a bucket. Kijab throws it away. It's intercepted inside by Menso. I don't know where he's throwing that one, Kevin. Approaching three to play. Have to look for Pulliam taking the ball down the lane on that floater or Bradley. To Mayich, it's Bradley. Key jab is there. Shot clock at two. Pulliam on the move, scoops it up, and it's an offensive foul. Wipe it away, will not count. But Dagan Hart once again gets in great position, is standing there waiting. Big Second play. time today. Yep, you better believe it. The freshman comes up big. 2.48 to go. Broncos by one. Just under 22 hours away. Welcome to March Madness. All right here on CBS. And it is daylight savings. So it's going to come even faster. It's Ikop. Kijap. Two and a half to play. Tegenhart. He's in the corner. Menz is right there, the best defensive player. He's going to work his way creeping into the paint. Oh, oh he got it! Oh, what a shot! Squeezing the trigger and comes up with the deuce. I think he surprised Benson with that little left-handed scoop shot. What a play. Seiko. It's Butler. And now Bradley. Two to play. Ten on the clock. Dagenhardt is on Bradley. Accelerating inside. What a fake. And he got the two himself. 17 for Matt Bradley. And when San Diego State can score, they can set their defense. We said they were going to rely on Bradley, and Bradley has produced in this second half. It's Shaver. 
Seiko on him. Taking a three. And oh, Bradley with a rope, saving it with a dive. What a play by a rope. If you're Boise State, you certainly don't mind that shot. Dagan Hart has been making those. Seiko on the wing. Rice defends. Bradley looks at the other end. The shot clock. It's down to four. Bradley, can he get a shot away for the lead? No, and picked up by Rice. Boy, what tremendous defense by Kijan. Timeout. Boise State with the ball and up by one. Boise State's got it, a lead of a point, and you see a reset. Well, Boise State with one timeout left, Kevin, but that will be a 30-second timeout because Leon Rice, at this point in time, elected to use his full timeout, and I think the reason is just to give his guys a little bit longer break. Key jab in particular sort of dragged over to the bench. Everybody's been playing so hard in the third game in three days. Where this, are they finding? Whatever no they got, my goodness. It's the quickest turnaround of any tournament. And this is a San Diego State team that's built around their defense, and so they have to rely on their defense here for a stop. Now, they've got nine personal fouls, so the next foul will be a two-shot foul regardless. Boise State with only five fouls, so they have a foul to give if that comes into play. Shot clock is at 18. Dagan Hart, the freshman inbounding. And a small lineup in the game. It is. Shaver's got it. For Boise State. Armush is out. Pulliam defends. Screen. Shaver will penetrate and drive. Offensive foul. It was an offensive foul. Wipe it away. And San Diego State wants a timeout. They're down by a point. They'll have the ball. And Shaver called right here for the offensive foul. And Lamont Butler, who's been doing such a great job shooting the ball, just gets in position and waits for him. Shaver thought he had a lane to the basket. Wow. You talked about the defense. They're the number one team in the conference and number two nationally in defense. We step aside. Game reset, and that was uh, team foul number six. So Boise State can't foul now. And this is, this is a big play. You have to have your position established before the offensive player leaves the floor. And it appeared from that replay that Butler did. Now, Kevin, Shaver is very upset about it. But from a strategic standpoint here, if you're San Diego State, you may end up taking the last shot of the game. But that's not your plan. You've got to go down and get a shot and as early as possible so you have an opportunity to foul in case you miss. Down by one with the ball. Here we go. Again, you expect either Bradley or, or, or Pulliam down with that little floater. The jab is on Pulliam. Inside they go. Mensa. Amish is there. Out it goes to Bradley. Driving up for the lead. No! He gets the ball. Twisting out. Pulliam. Here he goes for the lead. No! Boise State wins it! how it ended. Kevin, what a sequence. They cover up and they force a tough floater. You know, San Diego State had some chances. They, they had the ball down close. Bradley got an offensive rebound. Pulliam has been so good with that floater, but not that time. Wow. 27th win, a program record 
for Boise State, who won the regular season title and now have captured the Mountain West tournament title for the first time. A thriller in Las Vegas. Coming up tonight, the neighborhood, Bob Hart's Abishola. And back-to-back -back editions of 48 Hours for Evan Washburn and Dan Bonner. Kevin Harlan saying good night from Las Vegas. See her because of COVID and that really hit me hard. I miss my brother's growth. You know, he was like this tall when I saw him. And now he's about this tall. It's been very hard for me, but I have such a great supporting system at Boise State, and they made it possible for me to stay positive and keep going. So I really love them, appreciate them for that. Congratulations. Go enjoy it. Thank Cutting you. down some nets. Thank you so much, Ed. Well, Coach, 12 years at Boise State, you've had a lot of good teams. You finally capture a championship. I asked Abu the same question. What made this team different? Well, not only did you capture a championship, we captured two of them, the regular season and the tournament. And, and that's hard to do, and, and especially when the league was so good. I mean, it was the best it's been from top to bottom. And, you know, you saw a great San Diego State team. And all our games have been like that. And we've been fortunate to just have one more possession and, and get it done. And, you know, credit to my guys. They, they, they just have, they're, they're banged up, they're bruised up, and they just keep fighting. But our hats off to San Diego State. What a battle. What a great championship game. And, you know, we're fortunate to, to get the last shot. How did this game embody maybe the season in the Mountain West and yeah. your season? It, it really did, because all our games came down to that. And we're a much better defensive team than we've been before. Uh, and we've had some good defensive teams. This team was great. So it was kind of fitting that it came down to having to get a stop on the last play, and we did. Coach, congratulations. We'll see you next week. But right now, you got some yeah, nets that you. need some thank work. You. Thanks, Evan. Joining me on the court tonight is Mountain West Commissioner Craig Thompson and special guest from our title sponsor, Air Force Reserve, Major General Jeffrey Pennington. Uh, Major General Pennington, thank you for your uh, for your service to our country, as always, man, and, uh, and, and certainly appreciate the sponsorship of the tournament uh, by the Air Force Reserve. It is now time for the ultimate honor as Major General Jeffrey Pennington presents the 2022 Air Force Reserve Mountain West Basketball Championship Trophy to Coach Leo Rice. And the boys in state, Broncos! off to them, but how about these warriors behind me? Thank you, Coach. Amazing job again. Amazing job. 
Uh, and now, it's my pleasure to announce the MVP of the 2022 Air Force Reserve Mountain West Basketball Championship, Abu Higa! You know, it might be, you, the individual might get it, but I couldn't have done this without my teammates, man. I couldn't have done this without my teammates, man. Nothing would be possible without my teammates. I gotta give a big shout out to the guys right here, man. Yes, sir. Congratulations again, Abu and the Boise State Broncos. Shout out to my mama, I love you so much. Love you, mama. Thank you, Abu. Congratulations again and best of luck to the Boise State Broncos. They have punched their ticket to the big dance and will represent the Mountain West in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Commissioner Thompson, let's punch that ticket!